It is nearly the end of July, and that means that our summer vegetables are all starting to be ready to harvest. But when should you harvest your vegetables to get the best flavor and to avoid a lot of common problems? It might surprise you to know that there's quite a lot of latitude on when you can harvest a lot of your vegetables. Today we're going to cover corn, eggplant, squash, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, and maybe a little bit more, but we're gonna get started with the tomatoes right over here. Because tomatoes are probably the most contentious and I think the biggest bang for buck on when you could harvest at different stages. Now, of course, you can harvest green tomatoes and eat them as fried green tomatoes or make green chutney, but today we're talking about red tomatoes or actually any ripe tomato. I'll show you when to pick, for example, a Cherokee purple, which is a little bit different since it is a greenish, purplish red tomato instead of just green to red. So the first thing I wanna mention is that vine ripe is kind of a myth. Vine ripe tomatoes sold at the store are just attached to the vine. You have no real way of knowing whether they're actually ripened on the vine or not. And also it doesn't really matter. You see, once a color has begun to break, that's called the breaker stage, it is no longer getting anything from the host plant. So take for example, this tomato right here. It is probably 50%, actually closer to like 60, 70% ripe. It has red shoulders. It has a lot of red coming through. All the green has basically turned to orange. I could pick this tomato right now, and I will. Actually, wow, these are stubborn. There we go. And this will entirely taste the same as if I were to let it go full ripe like these tomatoes down here. And if you take a close look at the tomato, it's actually ripening from the inside out. So while you might see this and say, that's not totally done, it doesn't matter. The inside is starting to ripen very thoroughly and it's going on its way out. So this will be totally identical in taste and flavor to one that's vine ripened. Makes no difference. Now, the advantage of harvesting at this stage or even slightly earlier is that it's not fully red. When a tomato is fully red, it is a target for your pest. Squirrels, birds, anything like that, they see that big juicy red tomato, they want to eat it. If you pick it at this stage, there's a chance that the rats, the birds, and all that won't actually get to your tomato because they're not interested in a green sort of fruit. So now, the other reason why you might want to pick early is that you might have cracking. If you live in an area that gets a lot of rain throughout the summertime, what happens is that your tomato will actually split from getting too much water. In this case, I just overwatered this bed while this tomato was in its peak sort of formation stage and it just got a little bit swollen and it had a slight crack. Now some tomatoes just crack more often than others, some crack less, but if you want to avoid that altogether, you can just harvest at a slightly early stage. Now I've collected these four tomatoes that aren't perfectly ripe, but all of these will taste identical once fully nice and red and looking like this, which is a fully ripe version of this tomato. Now I see an example over here I wanna point out to show you the difference between the different color stages. As you can see, I have quite a bit of tomatoes here and that's another reason I like to harvest a little bit early. When you pick them slightly early at that 60% color stage, they will actually last longer. All you have to do is leave them in on your counter. Once they're fully ripe, they will tend to last maybe a day or two longer because there's no chance that they're overripe at the time of harvesting. This just lets you have your tomato harvest a little bit longer. It's another advantage. But the thing I want to point out here is the different stages of ripening. So if you take a look at these two fruits, this one is at pickable stage. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab it. There we go. It is mostly red. It has just a little bit of greening still on the bottom, but this guy's ready to go. It'll be ripe in probably two days on the counter. Now this one here, Technically, you could harvest it at this stage and it would probably be identical. Now, just for insurance, I'm not going to tell you to harvest at this stage unless you have a severe pest problem. Definitely harvest at this stage, let it ripen on the counter. But I would wait until it has maybe about 20, 30% more color to it, just to make sure that I am getting that full tomato flavor. But really, don't worry about harvesting at perfect ripeness because it doesn't really matter. Once you've harvested your tomatoes and you're storing them indoors to ripen, make sure that you put them on the shoulders. The part where it's attached to the plant needs to go face down. This part will otherwise get a little bruised and mushy and it won't be very good eating. So always make sure the tomato is faced this way. All right, so now let's talk about Cherokee purple. In this case, this is actually Cherokee carbon, which is a hybrid version of the Cherokee purple. So what we're looking for here is that the tomatoes have a different tone. They're not just bright red when they're ready or dark red when they're ready. This is actually almost perfectly ripe at this stage. So if you take a look at it, there's a lot of deep color on the bottom, but on the shoulders and the top, it is still a little bit green, a little bit yellow. I would say that this is probably based on how it feels. It's still nice and firm, a little soft at the bottom. This is probably about two days out from being perfect as well. Now, on the contrast, I have another one down here. I'm gonna harvest. This one I'd say is probably closer to 50% ripe. So if you take a look at it, you'll see that, for example, it's much more green, much more yellow. It doesn't have any of those deep, kind of dark purplish red colors to it. So this is closer to maybe 
I don't know, somewhere between three to five days ripe on the counter, depending on how warm it is and the different environment that it's in. But I'm going to harvest it a little bit early just to free up a little bit of space here for these guys. So now we have a pretty good haul of heirloom slicers here, but let's do a quick little update and talk about cherry tomatoes, specifically the sun gold. So across the board with cherry tomatoes, it's basically the same as the slicers, but I wanted to talk about the sun gold because the sun gold is one of our favorite tomatoes. A lot of people grow it, but one of the things that it has is that it cracks very easily, especially once ripe. So if you wanted to show off your tomatoes to your family and friends by bringing them a little handful of sun golds, just a little taste so that they know what they're missing out on, harvest them a little bit early, It'll avoid them cracking. It'll allow you to transport them easier. And actually it's one of the main reasons you don't find sun golds at the store or at the markets very often is because they don't transport very well due to their easy cracking nature. That's good. The next thing that we're going to talk about is when to harvest eggplant. Now, what I have here on my phone is I've pulled up the botanical interest page for the long purple eggplant, which is the variety that I'm growing here. And at the bottom, it even has information on when to harvest. It says that it should be harvested when the fruit is no longer than 10 inches. We probably want it in that six to eight inch range. The skin is still shiny and it can actually be harvested at the baby stage. This is actually really important to know because when it comes to eggplant, if it gets even slightly ripe, because we're almost always harvesting eggplant at a underripe stage, then it's going to be bitter. It's not going to be very sweet, silky, delicious. It's gonna be just more watery and bitter. And that is maybe why a lot of people don't think they like eggplant. So I'm actually going to bring in the camera much closer here so I could show you all the different stages and show you one of the telltale signs for when your eggplant is ready. So again, this is the variety called long purple eggplant. It is an Asian style eggplant. So what that means is that they generally have these longer slender shapes compared to something like the Italian or European style eggplants, which are more kind of oblong and larger. These guys are much more prolific in terms of how many fruit you get per plant. And they also tend to be more forgiving when cooked in various different ways. They're less watery, they're a little bit more silky. And what you're looking at here is that the skin is shiny. It has this kind of glossy appearance to it. That is a good sign. That means that you could harvest it just fine. It's not overripe. Also, when you push down on it, it does tend to bounce back a little bit. If you were to push down and it entirely just sunk in and didn't bounce back, that means that it is overripe. It'll probably be seedy and bitter. So let's go ahead and cut this one out. The other nice thing about eggplant is that you can harvest at any size. So you're almost always better off harvesting early. Actually you are, you're 100% better off harvesting early rather than late, because then it's just not going to taste good and you're not going to like it. Now I see one back here that for whatever reason, just didn't grow right. And take a look at the difference in the skin here. You see how this one is very nice and glossy. This is perfectly ready, whereas this one has this kind of dull appearance to it. It is overripe. It's going to taste more bitter and it's probably going to have seeds. So let's go ahead and cut these open and I'll just eat this later for dinner and show you the fact that there are indeed more seeds on this one over here. When it comes to these European style or globe eggplants, same idea is true. You wanna harvest at the size that the packet says and you wanna do the same test. Is it glossy? When I poke it, does the skin rebound? Obviously this one's quite young. This is closer to the size that this eggplant should be harvested at. All right, so here are two eggplant. We have the glossy one here, the not glossy one here. The prediction is that this one will have more seeds than the other one. So what I'm going to do is just take my knife, even feels very spongy as I'm cutting into it. I can already tell that it's not going to be very pleasant. So there you are. Ooh, you have quite a bit of seed material in here, just like that. So here's the shiny one. So by comparison, the seeds are much less developed in here. So take a look inside here. There's very few seeds. And if there are seeds, they're very small in comparison. This one has a absolutely loaded seed cavity. This is going to taste bitter. It's not going to be very good. So when you're harvesting eggplant, make sure it's shiny and not dull. Here's another summer classic and it's corn. Now compared to the other ones that we've covered so far, you really only get one harvest period for corn. Tomatoes, cucumbers, everything like that, they will continually provide fruit and vegetables throughout the entire season. Whereas corn, once it's done, it's done. So you really wanna make sure you get that timing right. So I have quite a lot of corn here. Most of it I'm going to be leaving as dry corn. And that's because I'm growing the Martian Jewels variety of corn. This is a type of corn you could eat as sweet corn or you can leave it as flower corn if it dries fully. So for now, I'm harvesting a couple cobs to do sweet corn. And just for reference though, this is a type of corn that although sweet, it is an old school sweet corn. So it's not like a crazy sugary sweet. It has a more kind of soft texture, a little bit more savoriness to it, but it is still a sweet corn. So I'm gonna peel this one open. I just already know that it's ready. 
just because I've been able to visualize it. Here's a problem though. So right there, that is a corn earworm. So it has eight the top couple rows of corn. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that aside. And let me show you what the rest looks like. So here's what we have left. This is the section that the corn earworm ate. And that's totally fine because here's what we're going to do. We're gonna get some pruners. I'm gonna come just about like half a row past where that damage is. Snap it right off. And there we go. This is oftentimes why you see corn like this in the store. It's already pre-cut. And the rest of it is 100% fine, no issues whatsoever. So now how do we know when to harvest this corn so it looks like this? And in case you're wondering, you can eat sweet corn raw straight from the garden and it's delicious, but don't eat too much because it is known to have a laxative effect. But munching down on at least one cob to enjoy the fruits of your labor is highly recommended. So here's our ear of corn. And the first thing you're gonna wanna look at is the silk. If the silk is nice and brown like this, then odds are that your corn is ready to go. Now, you don't have to entirely take the corn off to determine whether it's ready. What I like to do is split open one of these like so. Oh, there's a corn earworm damage. It's full of poop in there. So I know there's gonna be a corn earworm. So I'm bracing myself for that surprise. So anyway, here we are. We are now looking at the inside of the corn. Now this is called the milk test. So when a corn cob is ready, the corn is fully ripe and at its peak sweetness, what you could do is take like a fingernail or just like a knife. I'll use a knife just to make it more obvious. So you take something sharp like this. So what you're going to do is poke one of these kernels and if the juice is coming out white, so let's see if I can do that again. See how it's all white there? That is a sign that the corn is ready. If it came out sort of clear, and watery instead of milky and white, then that means that it's not ready. So in this case, it is ready. What you're going to do is just snap it down like that. And then what I like to do is kind of feel down here to find where the base of the corn cob is, which is right there. I'll take my pruners and then just snip that off like so. That'll get most of the outer layers off nice and easy. And then what I like to do is come up to the top. There's that corn earworm damage, snip that. And now you could store your corn just like this, or you could peel it. One thing that I want to mention about sweet corn is that when you harvest it, as soon as you harvest that corn, it is starting to degrade in the sense that those starches that are making up these corn kernels are going to quickly be turning into, or sorry, the sugars in this corn kernel is going to quickly turn into starch. So as soon as you harvest your corn, you wanna eat it ASAP. It's going to be the sweetest, most delicious if you eat it right away. If you wait, It'll get more starchy, it won't be as sweet. Now let's talk about peppers and how and when to harvest them. First thing I wanna mention is that every single pepper can be eaten at every single stage. When it's fully sized up and green, that is a green pepper. So a bell pepper that is ultimately red can be harvested green early on if you wanna eat it as a green pepper. This could be a great strategy for sort of increasing your harvest in the long run by harvesting the first couple peppers as greens so that the plant could free up energy to produce more red peppers. So for example, what I'm going to do is come over here and I have a nice sized Escamillo pepper that is nicely fully walled. It feels very firm and fresh and crispy. There's a very, very slight yellow tinge to it. So I think it is starting to turn. So by picking it now at this fully green stage, it will be used as a green bell pepper. And now the plant has freed up the energy that it would otherwise take to actually ripen this pepper. Now, next to me over here, I actually have some Bulgarian peppers. I'm going to harvest one of them right now. This is a pepper you can't really find very often. It's called a Cherveni Kamba or Cherveni Kamba pepper. And here we go. This is ultimately what it looks like. It is a nice dark red, very thick walled, sweet stuffing pepper. Now what you'll see is over here, there is some green tinge to it. This is the furthest I would go in terms of harvesting peppers slightly early. Now peppers can ripen indoors on the counter like a tomato, but honestly, not very well. I wouldn't ever harvest them earlier than like 90% because as they actually sit on the counter and ripen, they seem to get thinner walled, drier, and not as crisp and juicy and succulent as a freshly vine ripe pepper. So I like to harvest them at the earliest at this stage, but otherwise you ultimately do wanna wait for either that green stage, which is totally fine. Anything in the middle is still edible if you want it, but if you want that ultimate final flavor of the pepper, 
you want it to go full ripe. Now there is an example of a pepper that you do almost exclusively always harvest as green, and I'll show you that right over here. So down here in the same bed, a little further down the line, and what I have here is the jalapeno pepper. So jalapeno peppers are almost exclusively harvested at their green stage, and that is usually what you're used to seeing as a jalapeno. But it turns out, if you aren't already aware, Chipotle peppers are actually just jalapeno peppers that have been allowed to go fully red and ripe. So this is actually technically an underripe pepper. They go fully ripe and red, they smoke them, and that is what a Chipotle pepper is. So there's also, for example, the right here, serranos. I'm blanking on the term for a roasted red serrano, but it is also another type of pepper. And you can eat them both as unripe greens and they are still spicy, or you could let them go full red and they will get a little bit sweeter, a little bit more nuanced. The walls will become a little bit thinner, but these are nice and juicy. A fresh serrano pepper and a fresh jalapeno, you can't beat it fresh out of the garden. And just as a quick call to action, try your peppers at all different stages. You might find that you like them as greens. You might find that you like them as reds. I actually really enjoy, for example, red poblanos. They have a really wonderful flavor to them. And it's one of those things you literally can't find and buy at the store. So why not produce it out of your own garden and experiment with growing peppers to different stages. Summer squash is both a blessing and a curse. It can provide a whole lot of food, but sometimes it gives you a little bit too much. So now I'm gonna show you three different harvest stages and actually different ways you could use them to make the most out of your squash. And actually one of them, if you harvest at this stage, will probably never overwhelm you in squash. So first off, I'm going to start off with the behemoth. So this is a big one that's been left on the vine too long. It is now very large. The problem with this is that it's going to be very tough, watery, and seedy. It's not going to be very delicious in a saute or cooked up very nicely. This is zucchini bread territory. The other use for it is that you can stew it with like beans, cook it very slowly and long, or you could cut it up and give it to your chickens if you have them. So let's set that aside for now and talk about a more typical harvest. So I have two here that I say are probably at the perfect size. So these are two different size zucchinis. This is actually the ideal state to harvest them at. This is roughly six to eight inches. And at this stage, you could pretty much do anything with them. If you want zucchini bread, you can make zucchini bread. You could cut them up into nice little pieces, saute them up with like fresh tomatoes and garlic, or you could cut them lengthwise, throw them on the grill, grill them up really nicely, eat them with some fresh dill, yogurt, garlic. Very delicious way to eat your zucchini. Of course, throw it in soups. This is the ideal size, the size that you're most familiar with seeing at the store and also maybe at the farmer's market. So typically, this is where you want to harvest them at. Now there is, though, another way you could harvest them, and that is as babies. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one right here. The cool thing about squash is that it's entirely edible all the way from the beginning to the end. So you can't eat the flower, you can't eat the fruit, you could even eat the leaves if you really wanted to. You can either just cut them in half, saute them up, cook them whole, roast them, smoke them, they are so good at this size and you can eat the flour and leave it on just like that to make a fancy presentation. So if you harvest on a very regular basis, sometimes almost daily at this size, you'll never really get the chance to get that giant zucchini and you won't have too many that you won't know what to do with because they're all really tiny. So very cool, harvest your squash at different sizes for different uses and there's always something you could do with it. One of the most important things about cucumbers is to harvest them regularly. If you don't do this, you will stop getting cucumbers and then you'll be sad. So make sure you come out here and harvest your cukes whenever they're ready. Now, speaking of when they're ready, these right here are the tasty green variety from Botanical Interest. I'd kind of classify them as an English kind of cuke where it has the thorny skin on the outside. They're more long and elongated than like a pickling cucumber that's usually a little bit more stout or one of the Persian style cucumbers which are smooth skinned. So at this stage, they're totally ready to go. It can depend on the variety on the packet. In this case, it's listing it at about nine inches as the ideal. I'd say these are close to about nine and maybe 12 inches. So maybe a little bit over, but totally fine. What happens if you let your cucumbers go for too long is they'll get really seedy. If you don't like the seeds in cucumbers, harvest them a little bit earlier. You can harvest quite a bit earlier, but for example, I wouldn't want to harvest this one here. It's just not going to taste as good, and it's not going to give me as much food. So now let's take a look at a Persian cucumber. It's the same idea as the English. The more often you harvest them, the better they are. And right here, this is a nice size for this particular variety called Katrina. Again, depends on the variety. If it says harvest at three to four inches, harvest at three to four inches. If it gets longer, it's still fine. It'll be seedier, a little bit more gelatinous, not as pleasant. So just try to follow the instructions on the packet for your variety and make sure you do it often. 
or you won't get that many cucumbers in the long run. This next one is a pet peeve for me, and that is flowering herbs. A lot of people think that once an herb has flowered, it's trash, it's toast, you can't eat it anymore, and nobody wants it. And I think it all has to do with basil. Basil, once flowered, is notoriously not as good. So a lot of people recommend cutting it back, getting rid of the section that's flowered, and then hoping for new growth. Now, when it comes to other herbs like thyme, summer savory, or sweet marjoram, oregano, they are actually delicious when they are flowering. And also they will tend to be flowering a lot. So you might be thinking you're doing something wrong. Nope, it's just the natural life cycle of the plant. And these flowers are absolutely delicious. You could use the entire thing, chop it up finely, throw it in soups, beans, summer sautés with squash and tomatoes. Very delicious very aromatic. They might be a little bit more bitter, but they are absolutely delicious just like this. Another thing to remember is that things like dill, when they flower, will actually produce dill seeds, which are a spice you could use to make delicious pickles. Of course, there's cilantro, which turns into coriander when it produces seed, and that is also a spice. So experiment trying your herbs at different stages. That's kind of the theme for today. I want you guys to harvest things at different times so you could experience how they taste different at different stages. Nothing is black and white. You don't have to harvest it when it's perfectly red or perfectly yellow. You could harvest at whatever stage you want and you might find that you like it more at a certain point over another point. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I might do another series later on when we get some more of those kind of late fall harvests like the summer squashes, or sorry, the winter squashes and the melons. So let me know if you guys are interested in that, but I've got a delicious basket of food to process here. I think I have a couple ideas of what I'm going to make and maybe you'll see some of that on the channel soon.